Okay. Hey, Boker Tov, today's daf is daf Kuf Beis, 102. <laughs> we learned for a course on Kolos Ben Ruma. And today's daf is Kuf Beis, and uh, tomorrow, of course, is Simbra's Torah. Uh, so we'll start on Kuf Aleph and Beis, the Mishnah, the beginning of the parak. And also, the issue of Pascal Imo Kadesh Yosan has been a man has been a woman has been previously married, and she comes to this new marriage with a with a daughter uh, from a previous marriage. So she makes a deal with the new husband, saying you're going to support her. You know, you're not required to support. She's not your daughter. However, you make such an arrangement. Pascal means she made an arrangement. We'll see what kind of it's like a verbal arrangement. As we'll see, Kadesh Yosan has been the five years. I want you to feed, you you agree to to feed my daughter for five years, and he agrees. He's got, he's got to agree. What's well, a chiddush in that? We'll see, even though it's not a written, signed document, properly signed, but there's an agreement there. At least it's verbal. And we'll talk more in detail about the agreement. But yes, he he has, he's agreed to feed her for five years. Let's say. Is this like a shidduch? Yeah, like shidduch well, what do you mean a shidduch? No, no, no. no. He, she, he, the mother's marrying this guy. I understand. This is like when. Right. You oh, married, you, oh make a deal. you make a deal. Oh, we're going to talk about that. There, you remember, you're remembering well from years ago. Yes, it's like a deal. Now, Mrs. Lacher, let's say she gets married to somebody else. She gets divorced from this guy after two years, let's say. He's got three years left on, on the term, right? On, to feed this kid, right? She makes a deal with the new guy also that to feed him for five years. So let's say in the example we gave, there's three years in common. He also has to feed her for five years. And the first guy can't say if she's with me, meaning Rashi says that if I'm still married to the mother, I understood that, you know, as long as I'm married to the mother, I'm certainly going to feed her for five years, but we're divorced now. I Do I still have to feed her? Yeah, that was the deal. Right? You can't say, oh, if she was still married to the mother, then I would marry him. He's got to take her food for five years. And he's got to complete the five years, three more years, let's say, an example we gave. They got divorced after two years. She's married to a new guy here. This, he still has to feed her for three more years. Where To the place of her mother. Now, those words are important because that shows, we're going to see in the Gemara, that shows that a daughter is entitled to live with the mother, not with, let's say, her brothers. We're going to talk about that later on. We'll see. But the point is, he's got to take the food over there. Now, both of them can't say, they might say, listen, the first husband, the second husband may say, the first husband may say, the second husband, listen, the girl can only eat so much. If I have to feed her, you know, I have a deal, I'm supposed to feed her, and you're supposed to feed her. We'll pitch in, we'll each give 50 50, right? That's what we'll do. Can't do that. No, she only has one belly, as we'll see, she can only eat so much. So one guy gives her the food, and the other guy has to give her cash. He can't say, listen, I have food in the house. I'm a farmer. I'm not okay. No, one guy has to, one has to feed her the food and the other guy has to give cash, he has to pay for it. In other words, she makes a profit over here. That's how it works out because that was the deal. Now, Nissus Habal, Nissus, Nissus, let's say this daughter now gets married. She still has, let's say a few, the girl might be 18 or something when the mother got remarried, right? She still has five years with the new husband and three years with the old husband, right? Her, her her stepfather, right? Her, her, she has two stepfathers now, right? She had a real father. He's out of the picture. She has two stepfathers. Her mother got married once, got married a second time. Each time made a deal to feed the kid for five years. So she gets married. Who's supposed to feed her? Her husband has to feed her, right? To get married, the husband has to feed her. Basically, that's what Mrs. Habal knows some zonas. But he knows some and they have to give cash because she's living with her new husband. This daughter now, the daughter gets married, right? There, there. She has two stepfathers have to feed her, so they have to give cash. She's making a good profit over here. Huh? Well, it's a good racket, but you know, we'll see in a, sec a second. What should a smart, a smart, a smart uh, husband on marrying a wo woman and she has a daughter would have would have had he didn't have a good prenup, as we'll see. Exactly. Mesu. Now let's say those stepfathers or step your husband, new husbands died. But no saying is husband their own daughters, their own daughters, these stepfathers, let's say they had their own children, right? Their own daughters. Where do they get the chasamim? They get they get they get food from the chasam and they They only get manasim and chasam. They can't take the father had sold property. Can't go after that. But this girl, this stepdaughter, who is fed based on her mother's agreement with the husbands, is entitled even to get from 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 uh, mortgage property, property that was sold to somebody else. Right? She's like a vachov. She is like an IOU. I have like a document, you know, you owe me money. We'll see, it's not really a document, but there's an agreement there, like a document. 
to talk about it. And and um, so she's like, she like is owed money. Whereas the girls, the, his own girls, only get benachs and mechorin. And Rashi says, um, yeah, the, the, right, but she, right, but she gets right. She gets from us mechorin. Why? Remember, the ksuba is mishubed from what? The ksuba is mishubed to you know to uh, she's supposed to like karka. But for achilas peos and shvach kars and mazon aisha abados for the food that they're supposed to be fed, you know, the two hundred dollars, the ksuba, whatever the addition was, that you can go after landed property. You go after land, dafka with the landed property, right? But the um, for mazon aisha, you don't cut mechas mishubadim. You only cut mechas mishubadim. Again, don't mix up mechas mishubadim and mechas mishubadim with karka. It, it can be ben chon could also be karka, right? We just talked about that that uh, the ksuba is generally collected from karka, not from metalflin. But the Muslim Isha can only collect from B'nai Chor and not from Mishubadim, not that was sold. Only, only property that the husband or the father, whoever, whatever you would call him, had that was not mortgaged to somebody else. So here's an interesting thing. His own daughters can only collect from the Muslim B'nai Chor, it's Muslim Isha Baros. But the girl, the stepdaughter, they're feeding. They're feeding based on agreement. It's like about Chol. Tomorrow we'll talk about this. Now, Hapik, can you ask? It's a pretty bad deal. Hapik and smart guys, we get a, like a, a prenup, what we call today a prenup. I'll feed your daughter for five years as long as we're married. But if we're not married anymore, death or divorce, then you know that's what a smart guy should do. In other words, put in a proper a, a proper prenup. Itmar. Let's talk about a different case for a minute, and we'll try to prove from our mission. Itmar. A man says, Reuben says to Shimon, I owe you a hundred dollars. Rebbe Yochanan Machai, he has to pay. Those words alone, by saying I owe you the money, that's Machai even to pay. What do you mean? He just said those words. Were there witnesses there? Uh, there were people standing there. People, <laughs> people heard him say it. But is that a real obligation? So the Gemara says, "Then what's the case?" If he said to me, "You are my witnesses," like we say at a wedding, right? You want to make sure that the wedding is kosher or the divorce is kosher. You say you are the witnesses, not the other people who are mishpacha or posla edus or whatever. If he says, you are my witnesses, my time, why is Mishak Shepatr? If a man admits in front of two other people, I owe you $100, that should be valid. That's all you should be chayim. If he didn't say it, then my time, why is Mishak Shepatr? What do those words alone mean? He just said it in front of him. Maybe he was just joking. Right? My time, Chayim says, he didn't say, you are my witnesses. He didn't say that at all. He gave him a star, a document in which it said, I owe you $100. He didn't sign it. If he signed it, that would be much more, that would be stronger. But here it's speaking about, he didn't sign it. He just, he wrote in a document, I owe you $100. The fact that the, the, the fact that he gave him a star, in the star he wrote, I owe you $100. He wrote that in the star in front of Adam, it's as if he said, you are my witnesses, because the power of the star does something. The document says something. You got a document. Obviously, documents mean more than just verbal agreements. If the star would be signed, it's one thing, but it's not signed. He just wrote it himself. If he signed it, that would be different, but he didn't sign it. He just wrote in the star, Ayu Hanas, in front of witnesses. So Rish Lakish says, that's not the same as telling witnesses, you are my witnesses. You are my witnesses. That means he's committing himself. If he didn't say, you are my witnesses, even though he wrote in the star, Rish Lakish says, you're not Chayev. Rish Lakish says, you are Chayev. So we have this Machlokis for Rish Lakish. Why are we brought down over here? Because we're going to try to bring a ride from my mission. It's not. Hanosi is a man marries a woman. They made an arrangement. They fixed our mission. She, he agreed to that he's going to feed this woman's daughter for five years. My love Now, what's the Kiddush in that? If they have a written agreement, right? You have a signed agreement. I agree to uh, pay your daughter, you know, to feed your daughter for five years and it's signed. What's the issue? Why does the mission teach me? Must be this situation that he didn't really, they didn't really write it down uh, with a signed document. Simply, he agreed to it and he wrote it down, you know, without signing it. That's apparently what the mission's teaching is good enough. So it's no. Bishtar psikta, that's different. Because here it's speaking about, there was a psharp psikta meaning, it was a verbal arrangement. You mentioned before Irving, you mentioned your good like a shidduch. Ukurav gidol marav, dhamma gidol marav. What do we talk, we, t- t- we would call this today tanaim, conditions, right? That they make tanaim at the, uh, you know, before they get married, right? They made a deal. Uh, what do they say? Ukurav gidol marav, dhamma gidol marav, kamat tanasim lecha, how much you give him for your son, kachavach, 
how much are you giving? It's like we say shidduchim that are made. Today we think of it more chasidim do that. You know, the charedim do that. They make an arrangement. How much are you giving? How much are you giving? And then, and under the kitchen, they got married based on that without a Kenyan. They didn't make a Kenyan, right? They just they just uh, agreed to that. Kanu, Kanu, and Rav Rav says, hey, and the make mamira. A, they're just saying it alone, you're Kona. So our Mish is not speaking about where he wrote it in an I, he wrote down, I owe you $100 and he gave it to them, he gave it to the other guy in front of witnesses. He didn't say you are my witnesses, but according to Belkin, that's good enough. Karnish Lakish, it's not. What about our Mishnah? Our Mishnah, there was no, uh, uh, there was no, um, uh, there was no formal agreement. So there was no Kenyan, the, the Psalm Sikh Rosh says, Chasmel Poskin Trump Shimonam Bishnei Adim. Our Mishnah is speaking out, it's a stronger case, right? Because our Mishnah says, he's chayif to pay. So how do we say in the case where I owe you, I'm not chayif to pay? So no, our Mishnah is speaking about where even though there was no Kenyan, but they did it in front of Adam. And they say, yeah, we saw that take place. There was no Kenyan, but we saw the Chassan and Kala's family both agree. And came out of memories, it's according to like a Kenyan. The low boy Kenyan. The Kiddush is there was no there was no Kenyan in the case of our Mishnah. There was no Kenyan in the case of, of Rosh Lakish and Rabbi Yochanan. But in the case of Rabbi Yochanan, there was there was no Adam. There, there was no, they didn't say you are my Adam. He just said he gave him a shnai, says, I owe you hundred dollars. Rabbi Yochanan says that's good enough. Rosh Lakish says it's not good enough. What about our Mishnah? Our Mishnah says it's good enough. Our Mishnah speaking about there were Adam. There were Adam who signed on the deal. There was no Kenyan, but there were Adam, and that's the that gives it that gives it strength according to Rabbi Gilmarav. Let's bring another proof. Tashma, cost of the coin. A man has a child to be poed, a firstborn. No yeah. What's the strength? Why does that give it more strength? No, it gives well, less, strength, the, less strength, mechanism? less strength, less strength. No, in the case of the mission, right? There were Aiden, but there was no Kenyan. There was no, now. There was no, 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 there was no, there was no Aiden. He didn't say Aiden. He gave it in front of Adam. Right. In, in mission. Of okay. He gave it in front of Adam and, and, um, and the Adam saw the deal that take place, and they right. and they uh, saw, and was, and our Mishnah we're speaking about where the Adam saw it, even though there was no Kenyan, even though there was so no what, Kenyan. What but does they due to the deal, the fact that Adam that's good enough. To, yeah, there's the, no Kenyan, there's the, no star. But they but there was an agreement. There was a verbal agreement. A verbal agreement. That's what that's what Gilmar's Chiddush. That's the Chiddush that uh, that when they make a Shidduch like that, and they make a deal when they're getting married. And they got married based on that agreement, that verbal agreement that has strength to it. That's his chiddush. In, you, case, in the case by a shidduch, by a shidduch, if they're if the husband, if the two sides agree to something based on that, maybe they, you know, maybe there's a spar there that uh, uh, we were just talking about that the other day about people who uh, put all kinds of conditions on marriages, you know, that uh, whatever, like. They only, the, the father-in-law buys a house, but he puts it in his daughter's name. You know, how do you go into a marriage? It's like the, the concept of, I don't want to go into a marriage with a, with a pre-up, uh, a, you know, a, a pre-up because, you know, it, it doesn't, it takes away the love. It takes away, it makes it like a business deal. And it already, you're, you're already thinking what happens when the marriage is over. So it could be that was part of what Gideon Rav said. Listen, if two sides agree that this is it, that's good enough, even without a Kenyan, that's good enough. As long as there are Adam there, that's good enough because that you wanted to give it strength without the without the bad feeling of a pre uh, of a pre a prenup. And maybe that's what he's trying to say. I I, I you know that was Gideon Rav's finish. But in any case, and I'm just speaking about there were Adam who agreed who saw them agree to the deal. That's strength. Tashma, Kusel coin. A man has a child to be poda, right? A pidyon aben, and he writes that coin. Shani I'm going to give you five cells. I, I write a document, he doesn't have the cash. He writes him, I'm going you five. Chayv leaten low. Chamesh on his guest, he has to pay him. Ubeno ene poti. But his son is not yet redeemed. It's not considered redeemed yet, right? So what do you see over here? That just writing down that I'm chayv to you, even without Adam, it's still a valid thing. Ubeno ene poti. It's not considered the, just that he wrote it to him. So here you see that, he, but he's not, he's not poti, but he's chayv to pay. Right, our, what was our vision in the Gemara? Rabbi Yochum Shlakish argued, the guy says, I owe you $100, and there's no Adam, he didn't appoint Adam to him, right? But he wrote him a star, I owe you the money. Rabbi Shlakish says, that doesn't do anything, that's not good enough. If he didn't appoint Adam, here there was no Adam on it, and he said, just wrote him, I owe you, and he says, I have to pay. Isn't this against Rabbi Shlakish? That Marissa Shani Yosem, the Meshubah the Medaraisa, there's a chiv to pay. This isn't sound like I walked over to you and said, I have to pay you $100. Who said, I have to pay you $100? Is there, does the Torah say I have to give you $100? Maybe there's no deal there before. Here it's different. I have to pay to my son. There's a chiv. I have to pay the coin. 
So why did he write it if there's a chiv anyway? Kedei levar lo coin. I didn't have to give it to this coin. I could have given it to Irving or I could have given it to Steve. I could have given it to any coin that I wanted to. How did, you know, that's why I wrote it to, so that I'm going to give it to this guy. If that's the case, if I'm now mechuyiv to give this particular coin to five sella, the five shekels, so why is the son not podli? Why is he, is he redeemed just with this? The truth is, his son, the, 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 the truth is that, that Minah Torah, it, he has a chiv to pay, and he is part as soon as he gives the money. So what the chi can mean. I think, unfortunately, you see that it means when he gives the money, not when he gives him the shtar. Well, my time, so I say the son's not pugly now, when he gives him the shtar. Because we're afraid like this. You have to give five, you have to give coins, you have to give money, real money. You can't be poda with a shtar. What do you mean a shtar? Let's say a guy owes me five shekels. Can I give the can I give that IOU to the coin? Say here, this is you can collect based on this. That's not good. So we're afraid. Technically, even if he just wrote, if he wrote him an IOU to this coin, maybe that would be good enough, right? But the made Xera, it's not good enough. My time with this. Jerusham Yama, the people shouldn't say you could be part of the Bashtar. Rashi says that you can't be poda as a Bukhar Bashtar Khov, Shesh Lalakhar, Muslim Pagana, Dust and the Mamer, Mali Haishtar, Mali Haishtar, Vanan Tam Sekhus Baris, Ain Pod Loba Vod, Lobishtaras, Loba Karka. You can't be poda with land or with an evet or with anything or something like that. You have to put the actual cash. So that's why. So Rishlakish would say in this case it's different because of Shiba do Raisa, because you have to be part of your son. But in a case of where he just walks over and says to a guy, here, I owe you, here's an I owe you, I owe you hundred dollars and it's not signed. He didn't even sign it, even though even though there were eight there, he didn't appoint the eight not good enough, it's not five. Omar Abba. The Rabba says this machlokis is machlokis tunan. Kit tunan, it's machlokis tunan. Now here's a Kiddush also. An Arv, what's an Arv? A guarantor. Many people in Israel have found out the, the uh, problems of becoming a guarantor for somebody because they come after you if the guy can't pay. But then Arv is a halach in the Torah. It's his Torah Torah, right? It says, what did you to say? Anochi ervanu miyadi tevakshenu, right? So there's an Arv in the Torah. So here, let's say an Arv writes, here you have a star, an IOU, Ruben O's Shimon, $1,000, right? And they agree and they sign. After they're signed, a guarantor writes at the bottom. He didn't write it. You know, the, the deal was done. They lent the money and they signed it. It's done. Then the guarantor writes at the bottom after, underneath, the, underneath the signatures. So that's not really a guarantor. So the Tanakhama says, He can't collect from, from, from land, from property that's, uh, that's uh, mortgaged to somebody else. Uh, because normally a star you can collect from Nechassim Shabbatim. If I have a star that says uh, the m- lent money was lent in January and somebody else says uh, afterwards the, the, uh, the borrower, the debtor, sold property in February, if I have a star, I can go after that property. The, the, the creditor from January can go after that property. But he can only collect from Nechassim over here. Why? Because from the, from the Arif. From the, uh, from the Lowe, he can collect anything. But if, he has, if he's going to collect now from the Arif, on property, uh, from a property, he can't collect from the Arab only if it's Nechas Mechar, not Nechas Mechar, because it's as if it's a Milval Pet. It's like a Milval Pet. If I owe you, if we have a deal, I owe you $100 and it's not written down, I can go after your property, but only Nechas Mechar, not Nechas, not, not, not mortgage property, only Nechas that you have handy. My small thing, the story came for Abishma, but I'm going to go He says, you can't collect Nechas Mechar, and I'm a little bananas. And you go, you can't collect it all. This is not an Arab. He wasn't, he didn't guarantee it. He wrote after it was all signed. He says, "Okay, I'm going to sign. I'll sign it now." That's not a guarantee. Uh, you, look, you can't collect from the chasm mecham or mecham. I'm low lama. Why? Why can't you collect from the chasm mecham? Okay, it's not like a written job. It's no worse than a than an uh, than a verbal IOU. I'm low harei yachonik is chaver b'shur. If a creditor was trying to get money from the debtor in the street and he was strangling him, he was literally killing him. He says, "You know, give me the money." And he was dying. Another guy comes in and says, what are you killing him for? I'm alone. Let him go. I need to, I'll pay you. Let him go. I'll pay you. In other words, under duress. He's putter. He doesn't have to pay. Shalom and also obey. He didn't lend him the money based on the trust of the Arab. Why would I lend money or, or, or uh, you know, or, or rent out a house or whatever they use a guarantor for? Why do I have a guarantor there? Because I trust that if the kid can't pay or the loba can't pay, I'll get from the guarantor. But over here, when the guy says, let him go, you're killing him, I'll, I'll pay you. He didn't lend him money based on that. And the same thing over here in our case. And when, when the guarantor signed after the deal was done, after the IO was signed, sealed, and delivered, he didn't lend him the money based on it. He didn't guarantee you anything. That's what Benana says. 
So Lame Rabbi Yochanan Amrik Rabbi Shmuel Rabbi Shlokish Amrik Kavanas. So for Rabbi Yochanan says what that an IOU that's simply written IOU with no signature on it, but done in front of Adam is chayiv to pay. And Rabbi Shlokish goes Ben Anan and says no, that's not a chayiv to pay at all. With more no, the Ben Anan I'll leave it on us. Come on, Malpigi. Certainly Rabbi Yochanan is not going to come out like Ben Anas. Because Benanus is talking about even a case where there's where there where, where, of an Arab, which is like a Shiba del Raisa, because Arab is a Shiba del Raisa. And even there he says, if the Arab signed not with a signature, he signed at the bottom, but there was no signatures based on that. He just signed his name at the bottom, and the Adam didn't sign on that. Certainly in our case, Benanus would say you don't have to pay, because we're talking out of a case of Shiba del Raisa. We're just talking about a guy who says, I owe you $100. That doesn't do anything. According to Benanus, certainly, certainly, Rebbe is not going to come up with Rish Lakesh. Keep pleading on Ahmed Beis. I'll leave it to Bishmol. According to Bishmol, Bishmol says you can collect from the Chosim Bnei Chorin in that case where the Arab signed after the signatures of the witnesses. Keep pleading to Bishmol. Rabbi Elchanan goes like Rabbi Shmuel. Yes, you can collect based on that. Rabbi Shlokish will say I can't look on Rabbi Shmuel. Chosim Elder Shach Shibud Araisa. By an Arab, there is a Shibud Araisa. True, he's not a real Arab because he signed at the bottom, but at least Arab is a Shibud Araisa. There he could be more machmer. Rabbi Elchanan will say Shibud Araisa, but there's no Shibud Araisa in our case. So therefore, the Rabbi Yochanan stands. Gufa, we mentioned over here, this shidduch that we talked about at the top, the urban that you asked about. Right, that's what they say. That's what the, uh, they say at the, uh, the Hasidim get together and make a shidduch. And vifel gisti, vifel gisti, how much do you each give? How much do you give for your son? Okay, you're giving 100,000 shekels. 100,000 shekels. Now, of course, they go out and they snore the money from other people. How are they going to get the 100,000 shekels? But that's what they do. Umdu, they got, and so what? There were Adam there. They didn't, there was no king, no formal king. They didn't, not like the Tanam. Tanam today, they sign them. Exactly. That's a formal, that's a formal deal. They sign it, you know, make a, they break a plate and all that, you know. So they do all kinds of uh, shenanigans. It's, that's why people don't do the Tanam, because it's, it could be more complicated than a, than a Kedushin with a, a, a get. Uh, it's complicated. But in any case, and they get uh, Kishin based on that. That's the Kishin from Yidim Arab, that even there was no formal Kenyan and uh, n- n- none at all. However, if Adam saw that, they can sign. They can sign and they say, yeah, we saw these two people agree. Okay. Amarav and Mistavra. So Rav says, Mistavra and Mistavra Rav, Vito Nara. A person is, is making an obligation. He's going to give 100,000 shekels. The other guy's going to give 100,000 shekels. And there was no formal Kenyan. Yet it stands. If Adam saw that, they can say, they can write down and say, we saw that take place. So the question is, right, we saw it, in, he said before, uh, Rashi said, Adam chasumim edus gemura, right? The chasumim edus gemura, they signed edus gemura. The question, so Rav says, you know, this is probably only likely that such an obligation stands, even though there was no Kenyan. Um, uh, Amrav Mil said that the Rav of Baita Nara. When his daughter is only an hour, meaning she's not, she hasn't attained the age of 12 and a half yet. Why? In a shidduch like that, the Kamati and all that, because he's getting the money. What happens when you get, when, who gets, who gets the kess of Kedushin? When uh, a father marries off his daughter and she's not 12 and a half yet, he keeps the ring or the money, whatever they get, you know, they get married with, right? He keeps it. So he's getting some pleasure. So since he's getting the pleasure, okay, so he's Meshabbat himself. And he is, he agrees to the deal. He's going to give the 100,000 shekels. Abba Bogaris, when she's 12 and a half already, then she keeps the kess of Kedushin. Then lo, then probably this wouldn't apply. Rob, Rob Gilm Rob's rule wouldn't apply. So the answer back, well, him, I'm Rabbi Philip Bogaris, even a Bogaris also, even though he didn't use the words Bogaris in portion say, but, but he said, he didn't, Rob didn't say that, but it must be a Bogaris. If you don't say it applies in all marriages, even if the girl's 20 or 30, I'll be a Ben Manu also. What does the father, what does the father of the boy get? The girl gets the gets the, gets the ring, let's say, right? Gets the ring. She gets the uh, the wedding band. She gets the ring. Or her father gets it. But the father of the, what does the father of the boy get? He doesn't get anything, right? Ella, so what does he get? The marriage. He, the marriage. Ella, he know the commission of with the pleasure that he gets that they agree to become machutanim over here, that they agree to intermarry. That's the pleasure that he gets. Gummy makne adari, they're kona to one another. That's the Kenya we're talking about here. So that, that doesn't, doesn't apply to any age. Amalei Ravina Laravashi. Amalei Ravina Laravashi. Dvara malalu, nitni kasa olit mikasa. Can you write this down? What are we talking about? Nitni likasa, Rashi says, nitni chacham ksiva ledover, imbo lahachtem edem bedvara malalu, shein below Kenya. Are you allowed to write this down? You can't write it down. You can't write it down. 
He says, in other words, you, these things are not written down, meaning the Adam sign on it, we said before, right? We said the Adam sign on it, but are these things, able, are you able just to write it down, to put it into a document and give it that, are you allowed to do that based on what they saw? Or not. Or you say not. If you write it down, they're going to collect the Mechassim Shabbatim. And since there's no Kenyan, you really shouldn't collect Mechassim Shabbatim. So that's the issue over here. Can you write down the whole deal? That's the point. Can you write down the whole deal or not? The Adam said that they, they write down that they saw it take place, but can you write the whole deal on a document? In which case it might be about Mechassim Shabbatim or not. So he told him, Amalelam in Kassim. He said, what do you mean? Hapikton, what do we say in our Mishnah? Our Mishnah, we talk about, we compare the cases also, and you say these kind of, our Mishnah says, Hapikton, what do we talk about? Smart guys, they write a prenup. What do they write? I'm only going to feed her for five years as long as we're married. So you see over there, they write it down. Here we're talking about the same thing. You write down without signing it, right? Without signing it in front of Adam. Mashma, they write it down. So my Kosman, Omrim. Kosman just means they say it. So the Korali Amir Ksiva, just when they say something, you call that writing. We had a case before. The man writes to his wife, I don't want anything to do with your property. The Tanur of Khir of Khir learned, it means really you wrote it, you said it. He didn't really write it down. So in a Khanami, here you can't write it down. You can't really write it down. If you wrote it down, you took those words and put them in a document, you collect them in the In other words, the Adam sign on it and they're nicking by me, right? Even though there's no Kenyan and it's a valid deal. In other words, I agree to give 100,000. You give 100,000. Adam saw it, and they and they get married based on that. There was no Kenyan. It's a valid Kenyan. Adam said they saw it. However, you want to write that in a document and say, this guy agreed to give this much, and this guy agreed to give that much. In a document, it's not good, because you're collecting the Chasim Shabbat, which you cannot. Tashma. So we have another proof. En Chasim Shabbat, Arusim, Venesuin, El Vidashneim. These shtare, if you write a star of Arusim, Venesuin, we're assuming that's what we're talking about. Here. This kind of a shirach, I give 100,000, you give 100,000. You can't write unless they both agree. Hamidash names, if they both agree. Kosman, my love, star, we talk about this also. A star based on a verbal agreement. There was only a verbal agreement. There was no Kenyan. And they didn't have a star. But the Adam saw it take place. And the Adam could say, yes, we, we could sign it. We saw this take place. But they can't write it into a star. Here it's Mashma. If they both agree, you could write it. This is low, star, Eris, Mamash. Here we're talking about Taris. And what do you mean by star, Eris? Where he says, I, Harayat Mekudesh, sleep. How do you get married to a woman? There are three ways. Kesef, Shtar, or Bia. The rabbis frowned on Bia. You don't really use Shtar. Mm -hmm. Kesef, we understand. You give her a ring or you give her some money. But the Shtar, what is a Shtar? Uh, I'm marrying you with the Shtar by giving it to her. That's what we're talking about. You can't write that down. You can't write it down unless they both agree. You can't write it down in advance if the girl didn't agree. You know, they, they like they say today, will you marry me? And she hasn't agreed yet. You know, it's only if she's agreed to. It's a star Avis and Mamish could a puff rough shower. He has a machlux about the Edma. Let's say he wrote it for the girl. He wrote, I I have a Makadesh Lee on a star, but with Shlomi Data, she didn't know about it. He's going to surprise her with a star. <laughs> She's looking for a ring and he's giving her a piece right. of paper, right? Yeah. So he wrote it for her, but he didn't write it. She didn't agree to it. So it's a machlokas. Rabba, Rabina, Amr Makadesh, Makadesh, anyways, long as it was Lishma, even though she didn't know about it in advance. Rabba, 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 not only was it Lishma, but it also she knew about it in advance. That's what we mean over here. We're not talking about Psik, the, 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 the Shtar Psik at all. Tashma, another proof. Mesu, what do we say? If, remember back in our Mishnah, the husbands would agree to pay uh, five years uh, five years of Mazonos for these uh, stepdaughters if they die. So they'll say Mazonos Mechas, their own daughters get Mechas Mechorin. She gets no chasm shabbat, the stepdaughter gets no chasm shabbat because they agree. Nay, she kabal, she's a baal shchol. If she's a baal shchol, that means that there's a star. How can you be a baal shchol if you're not if you're not a star? Baal shchol sounds like she collects no chasm. You can't collect even if you're a baal shchol. You can't get no chasm shabbat unless there was a star. So the mashma there was a star here. Achamai skin v'shikam. They made a kenyan. Here it's speaking about you made a kenyan over here in our mishnah, which changes everything. Yochi benos nami. Why can't his own daughters also? His own daughters also. Maybe there was a kenyan there. Says, because they made a Kenyan for the stepdaughter, not for their own daughter. My Pisca, why is that definite? You know, <laughs> why is that definite? Maybe, you know, maybe he made an agreement for, uh, for only for the stepdaughter, but for his own daughters, there was no agreement because they were his own daughters. So like Mars says, why is that definite? Says, e, that was just no, I'll tell you why. Because his own daughters came later on. They were born later on, or they were born some other time. They weren't born at this, at this, at this when he made the, uh, the, this, when the guy got married now to this woman who already had a daughter. He either had a daughter or he had this daughter from this woman later on, but his own daughters weren't there at the time of the Kenyan. 
So, my, so his, he, he, this, this stepdaughter was there at the time of the Kenyan, Mahani La Kenyan. But, no, but his own daughters, the Labashas Kenyan, Lomani La Kenyan, Kenyan wouldn't help them because they weren't there at the time of the Kenyan when he made the deal with the new wife. So it's more Milo's skin that just made it's possible his own daughters were there too. Bechi Dami could go into Gersha, Bahadra. Maybe he divorced his wife and he took her back. And when he made a deal for her children, he made a deal for his children too. In other words, how can you say there's a difference between his daughters and his and, and daughters? If there was no star, what's the difference? He could have made a Kenyan for both. Maybe he took her back and made a Kenyan for both. Eli, the lesson of Tanai Bezim. His own, this girl, who's not fed by Tanai Bezim. Tanai Bezim says that I'm going to feed your daughters, right? Kolzman, right? as long as, until uh, they get married. I'm going to feed your daughters. If you get widowed or divorced, I'm going to feed your daughters. So, so she didn't get the, this new, this daughter that this other woman that this new wife brought in that was not his own daughter. She wasn't part of that Tanai Bezman. Tanai Bezman was only the daughters that they were gonna have children gonna have together. E, the lesson of Tanai Bezman, Mahani Lakin, so the king helps. But Bonos' own daughters, the Eastman, they have their own Tanai Bezman, Lo Mahani Lakin, the king's not gonna help them that. So let's go to mid regard. His own daughters are worse. The king, the king he's saying, he made a king for all of them. But his own daughters who are fed because of the Tanai Bezman, the king won't help for them. But the, the stepdaughter that are not fed by the Tanai Bezman, the king will help for them. So why should it be worse? Why should they be worse off just because they're his own daughters and they're fed with the time bezin? Why should they be worse off? El Benosa by the time the reason why his own daughters cannot collect from the Chasim Shabbatim, even this was since they're the Tanai Bezin part of the Tsuba, Amrit Sarat Bezin were afraid maybe he has set aside money for them. He has that's the reason why. Not because they were talking about the Kenyan. So the Gemara it, it it stretches, but each time we point out that no, this stuff cannot is not written down. There are Adam who saw the thing take place. And they write, like Rashi said, for Adam Chosman, Edus Gemura, right? She be them, Bishnei Adam, but Adam Chosman, we saw this take place. Uh, but but there, but there's you don't put these words into a formal agreement saying that you know this guy gave this much and this guy gave this much. And and the star that we're talking about in the Mishnah is also talking about that's what I mean, where where there is no star, it's it's simply like an, an IOU. It was uh, it was a uh, uh, an IOU without a signature on it. It's really like that kind of an agreement. It's a verbal agreement, but it's a shtar psik that's like, it's like, it's like making a shidduch. It's like tanon. The same thing in our Mishnah is, is that's what we're dealing with over here. It's like a regular uh, shidduch when they're making a shidduch lechachila. That's part of the deal that the wife made up with the husband that you'll feed my daughter for five years. That's also part of the shidduch agreement. And it's not a written, uh, it's not a regular written document. So we said that the first guy cannot say, listen, oh, I'm just gonna, I'll split it with you. Or uh, we said after they both can't say, let's say she gets married, right? Uh, they both can't. They both can't make a deal and say, uh, you know, we, we're not going to. You know, the husband's going to feed him. We, we're all going to give money, we, you know, but they, or we're all going to put chip in to feed her together. But rather, they can't do that. But they each guy, one guy feeds her, and one guy gives her uh, gives her cash. Amar of Kisim Bray, and or and he can't say. I would have fed you if you'd still be at home, but rather, must, what must he do? Or the first thing we said was, no, no, before we even get to the point about one guy gives cash, one gives money, we said, he can't say, I'll feed you if you're at home with your mother, but I'm not going to feed you, you know, you know, if we're still married, I would feed you. I'm not going to feed you in somebody else's house. Amr of Kisda, Zosa Maris, Bas Eitzel Ima. The last one in said, I'll feed you. In other words, he can't say, I would feed you if you'd live with me at home like when we were married. But rather Muslims do, he must send the food to her mother's house. Her mother's house that shows you that she lives with her mother. Now, what's the Kiddush in that? The Kiddush in that is this, because it could be a fight. A woman is widowed or divorced. The children will say, listen, uh, you're not living with us anymore. Uh, well, we would like the daughter to live with us because, you know, one food, we, we give one shalom that feeds her. If we have to send food to the house, that costs us extra. She's entitled to be with her mother. The mother's entitled to have the daughter. Even if she's a girl, says more me might be How do we know we're speaking about a gadola that a, a, a adult girl, adult daughter, skin Maybe we're talking about when she's a young girl. It's different with a with a young girl. You see, the sons who get the inheritance, they're not happy that they have to feed the daughter, right? Maybe it's not their uh, blood sister or whatever, you know, they don't want to feed the daughter. So uh, they'd like to get rid of her. So what he happened, my sister, there was a story like this. Misha makes me near Ben Cotton. A man died and left a small child, Le'imo, the mother. Yoshav, the, the inheritors of the father, meaning the, bro, the, the sons, Omer Miegel, let him live with us. We'll feed him. The Imo says, no, yeah, but we want, we, the mother says, no, I want, to, I want him to live with me. I want to take care of him. Menichel says, so you leave him with the mother. You don't give him 
you don't give him with somebody who they could inherit him. What does that mean? If this kid dies, who inherits him? Those brothers. The father's dead. Let's say the father died. Why? Because you're afraid they'll kill him. My show, there's no nice for Shahu, Arab of Pesach, the Shalom with the gears of his Arab Rishon, the Arab Rishon shall Pesach according to the Rosh and the other Rosh Mikhsavyad. Pesach, they killed the night of Pesach. The Kiddush is that killed them even though they would become Tomei and they wouldn't be able to carve Pesach. They killed them Arab Pesach. There's a story like that. They killed them so they should get the Yerusha. They want to get more money. In other words, you don't leave a child next to somebody who's in, you quote it's in English law. There was an English law that you can't take out a life insurance policy on your child. If you are the bene- if you are the beneficiary, because they're afraid that they'll kill the child to get, get the money, right? So there's rules about that. So here also he says, if he's a child, that's different. Maybe a child is different. Same thing if she if the girl's a child, she's a young girl. So you, there maybe there you understand that you don't uh, you know if Christa says you can't you, you know that the mother's entitled to that the child's line child live with the mother. Maybe that's where the child's small because you're afraid they'll kill her. Why would the sons kill her? So they wouldn't have to give her, remember, you have tent and the chasm for a wedding. Remember, even though that she's entitled, part of the deal is that, that they have to pay for a tenth of the assets have to go for her for a wedding. They'll kill her, so there's no wedding. So, so maybe it's only for a child. So Nimkain listening to the Shehi. She'd say, give it where the mother is. My Lamakum Shehima, why does it emphasize give it to the where the mother is? That the daughter is entitled to live with the mother, meaning the mother could say, I want the daughter to live with me, unless she wants to live on her own, but she's not living with the mother, in others, as opposed to living with the Orshim, whether she's a Gdol or Akhtana. Gdol, you assume she could take care of herself, but the Chiddush is, Akhtana for sure goes with the mother, because you're afraid the brothers will kill her, right? Will kill her, the inheritors will kill her. But a Gdol, the Chiddush is that even a Gdol is entitled to live with the mother and not with the sons. Lo And they both can't say, what would they both say? With the missions of Leo Mishnah, right? we'll feed her like one. As we'll pitch in together. I, I, we, I have to feed for five years. I have three years left. You have to feed for five years. Okay. She needs uh, X amount of food. You give half and I'll give half. No. But rather one gives the food and one pays the money. Or they work it out that way. There was a story to Ogrele Rechai Lechabe. Ruven lent Shimon a mill. A mill to, to grind the, uh, the tfua. Latrina. And he says, okay, Shimon says, I don't have any money, but I'll tell you what, I'll grind your tour for you. And that will be by rental agreement. I'll pay you. Okay, that was the agreement. Lasov later on, Ruven, who the owner, he ought to became wealthier more. And he bought a, another mill and a donkey to, to run it. Right? Amalei, so he said to, now he said to Shimon, listen, I got my own mill now. I don't want you to pay me with grinding because I have my own mill now. I want you to pay me cash. Before the agreement was, you're going to give me, you're going to grind my uh, my tour, my my uh, grain. Now I need cash because I got my own. Until now, you ground for me. Now I want you to pay cash for the rental. No, I can only grind for you. I, that's all I can. I don't have any money, and I have no other business. Sorry, I want to grind ground for you. It's like our Mishnah. That's like our Mishnah. The guy says, no, I don't need your grind for me anymore because I got my own grinding. So pay me cash. I'm entitled to get part cash and part and the, the grinding I can do myself. So you should give me cash like we saw in the Mishnah with the two uh, husbands. There, the girl has only one belly. She can't get twice. You can't give her twice as much food as she needs. All right, tied to Chris Lesser, she doesn't have two bellies. So if each of you have an obligation to feed her, let's say she gets $50 of food a week. You can't, you can't each send her $50 worth of food. What's she going to do with the extra food? It's going to go bad. One guy gives the cat, one guy gives the food, one guy gives the cash. Or each give half, half the food and half in cash. But here the guy could say, Tachin the Zavin, Tachin the Osev. Over here, the renter who has no money, has no money. He says, I, rent, I, bar, I rented it from you for a year. And my payment was going to be, I'm going to grind for you. So if you say you don't need the grinding anymore, I can tell you, listen, you you have a grinder yourself. So you grind what you grind, you sell. And, and, and the grinding that I do, that you'll keep because I have no other way to pay you. So here, it's it's not the same as the case in the mission. The mission, the girl's only got one belly. What are you going to do? Can't give her double the food. Here, you can get double the food. The food that you grind, you sell. And the food that I grind for you, that you'll keep. That's only if the borrower, Shimon, who's renting it, doesn't have any other income. In other words, he doesn't have any, uh, he has no other business, he has no other people. He can't use the grinder, the mill, to grind for other people to make his own money. But if he can can grind for other people, 
of Alyssa Trina Levichai, if he's other grinding to do for other people, and as he could sell his the, his time and the machine that he's borrowed, if you go and do on Midas Dom, Midas Dom says that Zahan of Zelo Chaser, you have to give him. So here, the grinder, the Shimon who borrowed it, he could pay cash if he could pay cash because he has other he has other uh, grinding that he could do for other people besides for himself. So if he could pay cash, then he that, that, that's a, he does have to pay, pay cash for the rental uh, that he's renting from Ruben. All right, tomorrow's daf is daf Kuf Gimel. It's on the podcast, and on Tuesday, Mr. Shem will start at the usual time of five twenty from the top of daf Kuf Dalit. Hot Sameach, a good and fitful to everybody. Hot Sameach, thank you.